he's losing, but you almost feel relaxed now. You just feel like, look, I might be mathematically out of this thing, but let me play the best bullet that I can. And maybe he can win a couple of games in a row. And I don't think there's a single person in this room, Ali Reza has a lot of fans who's thinking, oh, Ali Reza's down by nine. He's washed, right? First of all, he's proven those people wrong the last couple months. There is not a person on the planet, given Magnus's form today, that would not be down seven, eight points. I mean, I mean there's just nothing you can do sometimes. If someone in the audience was down seven or eight points, that would be really exceptional. That would be pretty exceptional. What does Ali Reza do? Does he try a4, rook, a3? Does he try e3, king, e2? a4, rook, a3 has been proven to be one of the best openings in chess. One of, I think, the best. And so Magnus hasn't analyzed it, and... Have you since your match? Since you're walloping, Mr. Narodinsky? Oh, I have. I mean, I'm just... That's why I'm not playing classical chess. I just know there's a forced win out there. And we get a deep Spanish. This is an anti martial line by Ferruja. I think this was in the World Championship match, by the way, between Magnus and... Jan Nipomnishi. Yeah, okay, because he's played so many of them, right? That yeah, you that he, remember that, his opponent. Yes, that he got bored and he left. Uh, he, he doesn't want to do it anymore. Well, let's not remember that. Okay, that's a multilingual point that only you will understand. Correct. So let's uh, let's instead focus on this maneuvering game that we're about to get in, in, the, in the Spanish. Oh, it's about to get spicy. Position's going to open up. Okay, so knight on b3. Now, what I found is that the first two or three games of the bullet, both players tend to play really quickly. Like, I'm talking one minute on their clock. I thought you were going to say really badly. <laughs> and really badly. Magnus, yes. knight e3, queen takes c3, knight takes c4. Ideas, yes. And bishop yes. takes b3. Don't get any ideas now. Yeah. Knight e3 is okay. We get bishop g5 instead. But okay, is this point? Ah, then bishop d2 maybe, and black's rooks are not coordinated. Ooh, bishop d2! Or, oh, okay. he missed it! He missed it, he missed it. Look at you, giving him the ideas, but unfortunately can't hear you. It's always easy from the side. Yes, queen takes on b3. He can't take on e4, you lose the bishop on e7, but yeah, probably pawn takes. Oh, don't pawn. recapture. I've blundered a bishop like that so many times with a Scandi. You like to point that trick out? Correct. Knight to g3 instead. SCC finalists don't blunder pieces in one move. Who would have thought? I, I mean, they do, actually, but plenty, especially in the bullet. <laughs> okay, rookie A by Magnus. And Ali Reza, he needs to make this initiative. Oh, no, I jinxed him! All right. Robert, I see you there. Oh, man. <laughs> we need a replacement. You, how did you call that? How did you call that? I think what Robert's thinking about right now is that Magnus Ikaro match where Bishop C7 was missed. You, yeah, the, 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 the legendary commentator's curse. You straight up just talked about it in the Scandinavian. Queen goes across the board. I don't think Ali Reza is relaxed. I mean, you can argue he's too relaxed, but I think he hasn't really fully recovered. Like, there is a, neither have I, so keep talking. Yeah, there, there is a point of acceptance of a, of a defeat. Whoa! Yeah, Knight D8, by the way. Queen F7 is there, but yeah, just Bishop E6. And resigns, yeah. Queen E5, etc. Rook F8 almost missed checkmate. But, but at least fine. you can threaten checkmate. Yeah. And Ali Reza resigns a 10-game lead, 15-5. And it is uh, it's the best one so far. The four pawns attack. This is um, definitely something that has been seen in Naroditsky bortnik games, I feel like. Yeah, more like Bortnik followed by Naroditsky. And guess what? Alexander Alekhine, the pioneer of this opening, he's buried in France, in Paris, a couple of kilometers from here. We should have done a little uh, VIP tour. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Not that, you know, we'll have live SEC finals because this is such a poorly attended event. Just kidding. Huge shout out to the crowds gathered here in eSpot and the crowds gathered virtually. And Magnus is on his way to winning another game, but he had to play Queen A6, I think? Or yes. maybe Queen B4, some way to keep... Uh, no, King, King D2, Rook B1, might as well, right? Play like Alakine. I always think that castling queenside is illegal here, but the rook can actually step over. The rook can go through a check. Yes. Sometimes right. I need a review of the rules. I also forget. Yeah, you get better at chess, you forget all the rules. Magnus loves moves like d5 in these types of positions. Bishop h4 is Or in these types of positions. There he goes king f2. Or in basically any types of yeah. positions. Rook d1, take on d3 and play knight e4. Take on d3 and play knight e4. Oh my gosh. Or king g1, fine. Fine. No, but this is lovely. Knight e4, knight d6, and you can't stop that knight from getting to d6. Yeah, it seems like Ali Reza simply cannot recover uh, at all. And, and also, Magnus is playing just fantastic chess. Just fantastic. D takes with the king, because the queen couldn't take, because the knight was hanging. Knight e1, d5, and rook takes d5 is yep. for the fans, maybe. You don't even have to. You can... Knight c2, knight e3. Yep, d5 then. 
Or knight b4. I think I just need to stop saying d5, and that's when he'll play it. And knight b4, queen a5? Okay, that move is apparently bad. Knight b3? Right, of course, which that will never happen. And now we are... Queen h7 stuff sometimes, or now? Oh, look at that! Okay. Yeah. Knight e4, rook f1. Right now, it feels like Magnus is going to win any position. Doesn't matter what you do, yeah. this game is going to go only one direction. Yeah. And so far, Ferusha doing a good job. Look at that queen. It collected everything. And now it's, it's back. Yeah. Lives to tell the tale. And he's just going to go g3 and push the h pawn. If the rook takes on f4, it won't live to tell the tale. Absolutely. King maybe c8, but then knight e4, knight d6. So this is just... It's, it's bad to worse. And finally, oh. will the knight reach d6 in our lifetime? Rook a7, it's... Maybe knight d6 first, okay. I guess he's going to repeat, if possible. No, okay, he's going to take on c4. Rook b4! Rook b4! Yeah, played a little bit too quickly by Magnus, but okay, you can trade and do whatever you want. You can even probably play knight d6. Oh my god. C5 is hanging, though, be careful. Yeah, Magnus is, he's, he's letting himself, you know... He's relaxing serve a bit. his calculational abilities a little bit. Why, what's stopping the pawn from just going all the... Okay. Bang, bang, bang. A to H7. Let's just... Uh, we need a fresh set of queens. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. were getting... The other ones were getting old. Oh, oh, he's just down a piece. Whoa, whoa, he wins it back. What on earth? And it's going to be a draw with queen F4. How about another pawn race with a G and the C pawns inching forward? Yes. That's what we're missing. Yes. There, there we go. There, there it is. Just don't accidentally give a check on F2. And this is going to burn a lot of clock time. Queen G7? Draw, or is he going to bleed? The, I feel like Magnus is the type to play more games, but who knows? And he's got a 10-point bleed, so definitely he wouldn't mind. Yeah. I guess he would. He repeats. Smiles. 23 minutes to go. It feels like New Year's is incoming. This year, they're, oh, we got a fried liver on the board. We're getting B5, maybe. Will Magnus play B5? B5 is one of the most fun lines. Is this called like a foie gras variation? Oh my gosh, France? he's entering the fried liver. This is hilarious. Yeah, we haven't seen this since <laughs> like Morphe versus Schulten in like 1840. And like 20 people who played this today on chess.com rapid. But yes, uh, this is a theoretical battleground among beginners. Philidor is like, wait, even I know this is bad. Yeah, D4. Black basically has to play 15 top engine moves to survive, and Magnus hasn't played them. But I think he's doing this to completely break the spirit of life, you know, and also have some fun, obviously, in yeah. case he loses. But he's, it's Magnus. What can't he do? And right now, he's up a piece. You know, I hate to be the controversial one in the room, but... But he allows A4! Oh my gosh, he's going to be up two pieces, and... You cannot afford to trade off this light squared bishop because that's the engine of the attack. Yeah, you need it to, I think, include a4 and c4 and try to attack from that side. Danya, he's, he's not played this right. Now a4 is possible in so many different positions. Yeah, this is a huge problem. The king is actually evacuating back through the king side, which you never see in this line. A4. Yeah. Now's the time, and he yeah, plays yeah, it. And it wasn't right, of course, but okay, whatever. Wow. And white is now... Ah, he maybe. takes h7. What a move. Yeah, that's, that, that's quite nice. No, oh, <laughs> Magnus getting away with anything. That's so what you can do when you have a 10-game lead. You can, you can play creative chess and maybe take with a king, too. <laughs> no, 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 no. Please don't do that. We're like 10 minutes away from, from him doing that. Well, we're, he's going to play a bond cloud. I mean, Nolan started. Nolan's been waiting for that. I could see the moment the e-pawn, e3, maybe. Yeah, but this is, th this is a, a much easier position to play in bullet with white. But not after the effects of a three-hour match. You know, you, you kind of want it to be over. And bishop c5, that is a money move to stop f4. Uh, of course he finds it. He finds it. He's attacking f2. And he will be taking over this game shortly. Or he will make a blunder and come under a huge counterattack. Rook a to d1 would be the tempting move. Knight e4 is the Ferruja move, and it is the classy move. Yeah, I'm not really sure what Magnus missed there. Maybe he doesn't know either. He just, okay, rook d1 wins a queen. I'm not sure. What? Oh my, the renegade king. No, you should not have traded those knights. <laughs> the king's going to a5. You should have traded d's knights, but queen f6, and d's queens might get off the board. Oh my gosh. And white is up four pawns for a bishop. Oh, just like we drew it up. Yeah, not bishop for four pawns. It's four pawns for the bishop. Queen f4. Maybe you don't trade the queens, but then queen f2. I was going to say, queen, queen f2, queen f1. Don't let me near the board. And the one remaining pawn for Magnus Carlsen is going to decide this endgame. And white might lose his one remaining king pretty soon. Rook c2. Rooks. 
B4, just push, or King A5. Two hmm. seconds for each side. This is how we started the match, a time scramble. But the pawns are very dangerous for white. And somehow Farouz is... Oh! Oh, and the bishop is gone! Or is it? Yeah, it, it now now white is playing for a win, for now sure. Bishop is still on the board, oh my but goodness. it might not be for very long. Yeah, now the play... Uh, five, Rook, Rook C1! Rook C1! Rook C1. Rook C1. F5. King G5. He's yes. got it. In He's the bag, World Bullet Champion won't give this one away. There we go. <laughs> and we're going back to the King's Indian. We've been here before. And it is the best bullet opening. Levy, you called it. Uh, Ali Reza not deterred. He keeps going back to this H6 line. Honestly, Magnus might want the repetition now. Yeah, he j Magnus just clearing off the board is what he's doing. Yeah, Knight G4. Okay. But black is often better in these lines, and this is how it all started, right? Ali Reza got the d4 square. Yeah, but Magnus just completely killing the game. Might be it, maybe. I think Magnus is going for an endgame that he's going to try to play for five minutes. Bishop e2, bishop d3, or now rook d3, fine. King g2, king, yeah. and eventually white can get a 4 and e5 in, and oh. black's not the one calling the shots here. e5, yep. Rook f3. Yeah, and Magnus is just going to play this so the match clock keeps moving. That's, that's really what he's doing here. No, actually, I like Black's position, e5, f6. But it, does, I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, unless you hang a rook here, uh, you're, you're going to make a draw. Hang a rook? Yeah, rook g3, I meant. Yes. Yeah. yeah just in case anybody's, you know, anybody's curious how to lose a rook in this position. That's, we have that's... one common bc and rook g5, by the way. It was a yeah. funny way to win the c pawn. It's still there. It's still there. It's still there. Yep. And now you Now it might six. be necessary. Rook d3. No, no, no. That blunders up four. No longer there. Okay. Rook g3. Missed the chance. Maybe he's going to go back to h2 and re-blunder it. That would be quite funny. <laughs> re just, just in case. I think that's in the Oxford English Dictionary, to re-blunder. Yes. Bishop d1. The bishop is coming around now to d2 to put pressure. Ooh. Yep, yep. Bishop c7, rook a7, rook g. Oh, that's nice. That yeah, that looks that looks quite nice. Bishop g4. And rook takes a7 will pin the bishop to the rook. Black might have to send the d pawn forward. No, that is not how the pawn moves. Yeah, this is this is not great because he's going to lose at least 2 minutes of the match clock and not that I think he would have recovered from a 9 game deficit. This this really is a, a shocking turn of events today, I must say. Yeah, every time we expect a close match, it seems, and I don't think anyone's complaining. Of course, an Armageddon is always fun, but I don't think anybody here has moved. They've moved their vocal cords. We've heard their oohs and ahs, but this display of mastery is no less cool. You know, we've had close match. we've had multiple. We had four matches, right? But yep. maybe we extend the stay in Paris, and tomorrow we play Hans Firuja and Magnus Hikaru. Man, the concept of a Magnus Icaro match, I mean, just like so for fun. popular, you yeah, know, I don't think anybody would want to see just that. Just for fun, because they, you know, we didn't get to see those matches, because that's how semifinals work. I mean, that I, would, would make anybody Paris, object? That would make Paris a real blitz society. Yeah, that would, uh, <laughs> that's a fun place, by the way. It is. Have you been there before? No. Not on this trip, though. No, sure. no, no, definitely not. Um, what? That was wrong. King E3, I guess, he had to play and run with his pawn, but, um... This is just going to head for a draw, Danya, but maybe Black will win with the deep on. Yeah, it's a bullet society right now. King F2. We got a perpetual rook G1, rook G2. Right, just like we drew it up. Okay, now, uh, oh, oh, and Black is winning. King, rook C8, rook C8 maybe. Eight, King yeah. C1. Or rook E8, I guess. Oh, uh, never mind. Right. We, we both are terrible. No, we're ter okay, or what? Rook C2. Can King? Black take and go rook C1? Of course. Or rook e8. Okay, what is, what is happening? He's just giving up the rook to promote. Yeah, black probably should just take the rook and try to promote the pawn, but I feel like we're going to get a decisive result here one way. The one side is going to try their best to lose this. <laughs> yeah, don't we all? Don't we all? King g5. Oh, king g he could have gone king f5 there. Magnus pre-moved rook f4. Oh, Ali Reza's got chances now, but Magnus is kind of good at end games. I heard, through the grapevine. Yeah, but four minutes of, I think, match time have, have disappeared. This is sort of the perfect strategy if you'd like the match to end. Are we going to get the classic, like, rook b4, rook c2, rook a4? Who blunders their rook first? Yes, that's typical time trouble nonsense. White's got one second. I don't engage in those kind of shenanigans. 
No, never. King E3. I oh! oh without time. What? Okay. A slightly anticlimactic finish. Yeah, well, at the point, at the pace of two games, two points per 15 minutes. What the Queen F3? It might be 2044 before this comeback is complete. And back in the days of uh, 2018, when a grand total of 46 people watched chess, there was um, <laughs> there was Magnus Carlsen versus Fabiano Caruana for the World Championship, and they played this Sveshnikov Sicilian, and and they pushed theory forward like 15 years. It was really fascinating times. And Magnus really enjoys these positions because of the imbalance. The computer always gives some slight edge to white if played perfectly. But this f5 coming for black is really, yeah, is really nasty. And white's knight on b5 not hanging, obviously, until you play bishop b7. But Levy, to your point, Magnus often is mischaracterized as someone who tries to dodge mainstream opening theory. No, he makes mainstream. He is mainstream opening theory. He defines it. And he's been ahead of a lot of opening trends, right? The Sveshnikov. Uh, he can basically play anything, and he doesn't have an opening repertoire because his opening repertoire is like the set of all openings. He can do whatever he wants, and when he decides to dabble in an opening and change it around, that's what's going to happen. And uh, it's funny, if, if you actually look at the database, after 2018, that match, Magnus Fabiano, so many top players went there and played tens of thousands of games, and to this day, right, are making improvements, so... Just a, what he's having. Just a little fun fact. Did you ever dabble in the Sveshnikov? Uh, not yet. I actually had the honor of playing Sveshnikov. Yes, that was a person who created the Sveshnikov. Uh, passed away recently uh, at a Blitz tournament, but we did not, in fact, play the Sveshnikov. He didn't pass away at the Blitz tournament. No. No, no, no. no. He, you played him at a Blitz tournament. I mean, I'm surprised he didn't because of the quality of my play against him. <laughs> but uh, he was a total legend and uh, never played the Sveshnikov. I'm a lifelong Night Orf player. Recently, I've been trying different kinds of Sicilians. That's the spice of life. Which Sicilian you try in chess? That's right. Or where you push your C pawn at the start of the game. I heard yeah. one square is possible, too. Yes. With white? Of course. Bishop d6. Rookies. Yeah, what? what it, or, <laughs> Knight f2 is possible. Oh, oh my gosh. It's still possible. Still possible. King g1, queen, rook is hanging, and that's it. Yeah, rook f2, rook e1 is mate, so... Oh, he took the bishop instead. Now he's down in exchange. And the king is a sitting duck here. That queen is getting involved right quick. But Magnus did just lose on time, so maybe he will lose on time again. He just trapped the bishop. He, guys, was, uh, he wins. Guy's whole board awareness levy. He didn't go for yeah. the king. He went for the bishop. Yeah, just... Just so good, and, and and this is the bullet tilt. We have a modern opening on the board. Only one man, I think, can play this consistently and win games, and that's Hikaru. Mm -hmm. uh, he has played the modern in Blitz and Bullet his entire life. And you look at his game sometimes, and it's like plus five for the opponent, and he just wins. He's even done that uh, this uh, Paris visit, but not against Ali Reza. Yep. I mean, he did do it against Ali Reza, not enough times. Is the modern still going to be called the modern in like a hundred years? Is it eventually going to be called like the the, the old? Yeah, the old. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I don't know who names chess openings. Nobody. Yeah. We just kind of call them that. Yeah. Who was the first person to you know call the Sicilian the Sicilian? Like, is it named after the famous Soviet master Boris Sicilian? <laughs> <laughs> no, there was some story, right? It was. Um Actually, some, some guy named, like, probably Julio or Francesco or something. <laughs> yeah, he, he played it in a chess club in Catania. Yep. In Palermo, and this is not looking great. F3, Magnus cementing the E4 pawn. At some point, white has H4, man. Like, even now, just attacking the king's side and asking some very uncomfortable questions. Such as who is the winner of this SCC, but I think we do know the answer to that one. Queen A4 instead. Yeah, Queen A4, and what, what, what can we say, man? What can we say? You know that whole uh, monologue about Hikaru getting uh, too old and then you winning, uh, Hans winning things when Hikaru's like, you, we gotta worry about Magnus. <laughs> Magnus is gonna stick around for like 15 more years winning everything, it's unbelievable. I mean, the way that he's adjusted his style, and every time it seems like He's getting tired of the whole I'm the best player of all time routine. He puts in a performance like this one where he seems fresh, he's motivated, 
and he seems ready to climb the next step, the step that you didn't think was there because he's climbed the ladder. He's at the top. Yeah. And he's at the top of his game right now. Bishop well, takes c6. He'll take on c6. He'll go for the pawn on a6. That's a, you're reading my mind. Or, th or that, he apparently. He took the other rook. He prefers to paralyze the black position and play rook d8 and bishop b3. That's how he wants to win the game. Oh my gosh. I c7, rook d8, and bishop b3, or bishop d7, rook d8. Bishop b3 is such a lovely deflection. You could play that even if the black king moves out of the way, because black's bishop doesn't have any further squares. Taken yeah. bishop b3, you yeah. called it. Yeah. Bishop d4, bishop b3, and uh, bishop d4, bishop b3, or, or was rook c7, but... Ooh! Yeah, he, just, he just does it anyway, because he was defended. And now, this juicy little... Yes, I that is they the, call that a pawn. That is a filet mignon, that's what that is. I, I must tell you, um, we are here live in Paris, and the applause for every Magnus win has dwindled by 10% every time he wins, because you're just like, really? You know? And um, that's the unique thing about this format, right? Like, this format is super exciting when it goes down to the wire, but every sport that doesn't have a timer just has, like, a thing you play to, right? And in tennis, you have sets. It's not like 6-1, 6-1, 6-1, 6-1, 6-1, 6-1, 6 You just stay for three hours and keep losing 6-1. I mean, that would be very brutal. Here, you, you have to play every game. E each game is worth uh, some amount of money. They play and split some prizes. But, yeah, this is the, the brutal nature of a speeches championship match goes south. And today, it's gone south, like to Marseille or, you know. <laughs> I tried to be a Danya there. No, 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 no. I... I don't know any direction. I still have to do the never eat soggy waffles to, you know, tell my west from my east. Yes. Okay, we have some... So I, I thought Ali Reza was black, by the way, because of all the openings that he's played today. But it's actually Magnus who's got the King's what? Indian attack going. Whoa! Bishop <laughs> A5, that was not a blunder. No, Knight B, his idea was... I mean, it might be, but he didn't blunder a piece. Yeah. He blundered the King's Indian. Yeah, this is... Oh my gosh. Oh no. It's just mate. It's just mate. And he resigns and. Okay, Smarter Chess putting in a very controversial prediction here. Yeah, a current win probability of 100%. Now, why are we showing this? Yeah. Whose call was it to put this on the screen? I mean, I mean, my God. What, what, you're insulting the intelligence of like 100,000 live viewers right now. I don't. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. We, we thought it was 65 still. I don't know. I mean. Eight minutes left, 11-point lead, so let's do some calculations. Yeah. 20 seconds per win. If Ali Reza pre-moves every move for the rest of the match, he gives himself a chance. It just put a picture up of like a... He's kind of doing that right now. Of like a cat or the Eiffel Tower sparkling or, I don't know, something. The Sen, okay? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're kind of right, this is this is This is just messed up, man. That's not cool, all right? We told you guys that the players watch the stream after it's over. You're going to be hearing from Team Faruja. I'm just telling you guys, the, the, uh, that wasn't us, all right? That wasn't us. Well, I think Ooh. It's, it's becoming a smarter chess better never show his face because it's becoming a commentator tradition to throw the proverbial rotten tomatoes, you know, at him. It's yeah, like I, the, the, no, the, the person that makes everyone unite in their collective... You know, collective anger. Yeah, I, Danya, I feel like every smarter chess prediction has been wild. Like, it was 65-35, and, oh. and, and Magnus... Look at that by Ferruja, by the bishop f6, trying to deflect the queen. Yeah, I, I appreciate your efforts in still analyzing the chess. I... White has three pieces and black has two, what can I say? Yeah, yeah. This Sorry, white has two, black has one. Oh, I thought... For, oh, oh, God. It's, it's a 12-game lead. Okay, now one person applauded. Yeah. And it's basically, yeah, it's, it's, it's all Magnus. I mean, what can you say? By the way, I, I've suggested a rule change. I said that at, at five minutes left in the bullet, you should be able to, to call it, if you're losing. By, by I all. don't think there is a soul on this earth who would, who would uh, reject this. Ali Reza Faruja will be eternally grateful for you if this rule is instituted. But you have to tip your hat to him. A second place finish in the SCC. Yes, of course. By the hometown favorite. Obviously, his match against Ikaro will enter the, I think, annals of the greatest... Uh, SEC performances, maybe to, re to be replaced by this one, but Ali Reza has had an incredible six-month run, and let me tell you, I am looking forward to watching his next candidate's performance, even though that's very far away. We have the Olympiad coming up, Levy, but he has been incredibly resilient in a career that's been longer than people might think. You know, he's 21. He's been a GM for seven years. He's been 2,700 for, I think, four or five years. 
And when you have that much experience at that young of an age, that's really scary for your opponents. For sure. It's scary for every opponent not named Magnus, right? And it's, it's quite wild how well he performed today. He obviously rose to the occasion. And the question with Ferruja is not about if, it's about when. And yeah, the big question mark remains about the candidates tournament, of course. Chess has historically put a lot of weight mm -hmm. on the candidates and the world championship cycle, of which Ferruja has struggled the last two times, but he wins basically everything else. Getting second in the speed chess championship, and I wonder how Hikaru feels at the moment, you know, because he wasn't able to instill this level of hesitancy mm -hmm. in Ali Reza. Ali Reza clearly showed up for that match super fired up, and he got it done. He got it done. Hikaru had some early comebacks, but Ali Reza never wavered, and he played better and better to continue this match. Oh my gosh. You, ha you really literally wish the bishop on h1 were gone, because that would allow White to prolong the yep. game. Yep. Four and a half minutes, folks, left in an unforgettable weekend of action. We know who the winner is going to be, this line. Yeah, this is a wild line. It is indeed. And Ali Reza, maybe this was what he needed earlier in the match, but all the armchair generals, all the uh, wannabe Napoleons, they're, they're going to come out after this match, but you try sitting down and playing Magnus. I've tried, and I don't recommend it to a lot of people. No, no, and, and, and it will be fun if the... Guys downstairs ask him, like, does he think he's a 65-35 against Ferruja? He'll, he'll definitely have uh, some nice things to say. He is very complimentary. And, and he has touted Ferruja as his, uh, you know, his successor to the throne mm -hmm. in many ways. But I also do wonder, did that put unnecessary pressure on Ferruja? Was it gamesmanship? Was it the ultimate form of putting pressure on, on, on a young man. Of course, it's, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but you know, to hear that from the best player in the world is... It's simultaneously infuriating and infinitely validating. Correct. You know that if you get to the world champion, you're the only person, world championship, you're the only person on the planet who the world champion is interested enough to play. And yet the expectation that that creates to win the candidates tournament is insane. I mean, the pressure at that tournament, you feel it from the commentator's desk. It's unbelievable and... and Ferruja has many more candidates participations left in his career. He's 21, for goodness sake. People seem to forget that. They think that he's 101 sometimes. Honestly, I don't think... the discourse on the internet. I, I feel like we say it all the time. And, <gasps> no, uh, no, 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 no. Rookie 7 is coming. Rookie 7 and... Lucky lead number 13. Yeah. King is going to take the bishop. And, and another check. check and, and another capture. Yep. And another win. And we might have one game left. But... At the speed at which Ferruja played that game, he lost like 10 seconds on the clock. We might have two games left. This is an exchange Spanish, which is a line I used to play a lot when I was about seven, eight years old. I always enjoyed these positions, uh, you know, down at the local uh, chess tournaments against my fellow seven and eight year olds. That bullet point just didn't make it onto the 2004 list back when Levy Rosman, and I actually was also playing this line at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were the good days. I got so nervous in my second chess tournament, I forgot how to notate castling. And I asked my opponent, and then he told me, oh, oh. And then he beat me in like 10 moves. So I had a very funny chess career in my first two tournaments. I went 4-0 oh in my first one because I was better than everybody. And then I went 0-4 oh in my next one because I was worse than everybody. And, you went 4-0 uh, oh, or you went 4-0-0? Four, four oh, oh? I went 4-0-0, oh, oh, yeah. Okay. I, 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 but I, I lost all the games of my second tournament. I didn't oh, give up. Oh, boy. Yeah. I didn't, uh, I didn't stop. And a uh, friendly PSA to anybody watching this before we close the show and take it to the interviews is you really should play chess in person. I think over the last three to four years, uh, millions of people have gotten into chess online, but there's really nothing quite like playing in person, whether it's competitive or community. Like, why does anybody do any hobby? To feel a sense of community, part of a community, or to improve at something and use your time wisely. So, yeah, do it. And Levy, let me say this. First of all, in person, on the whether you're playing on the computer or on the board, that matters less than sitting in the same room facing each other. I have not seen a group of people in the 2000 teens look at their phones less over the course of many hours than this awesome crowd here. Uh, when they looked at their phones, it was to look at Twitch or YouTube. Every one of these matches has had their own unique character. They've captured the attention of everyone watching.
I cannot believe there's under a minute left in the SEC Finals. This weekend felt like it would never arrive. And now it goes by so quickly. That's always what happens with events that everybody anticipates. But I don't think there's a single person who's watched any part of this and feels like they didn't get what they signed up for. You know that feeling when we board the plane tomorrow is going to be so sad? Because you just yeah. remember boarding the plane here, and now you're going home, and there's going to be... Well, there was a three-hour delay, so I definitely Correct. remember. Correct, yeah. That's, um, that's flying out of the States. It's going to be special. It's going to be really special. You can't wait for the next one. But the good news is top-level chess returns in literally like four days at the Olympiad. So Yeah, withdrawal and chess never last light. It's just you get one tournament, everyone's sad. And everyone's, I miss this. And the next tournament starts, and Magnus has won. And he's won. The SEC is over. I want to award our trophy. Michael Brancato will award the Speed Chess Championship Lightning Bolt. Magnus, you you still you you still uh, have it in you. To, you were putting on a show there. Was it when you found it and you never took your foot off the gas? Is there is there a part of you that just is still looking for matches like this that motivate you in a way where we get? I don't want to say you're not at your peak anymore, but I mean where we get like the Magnus who we know is just still dominating. It's still your world when you want it to be. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously. Um, Days like today is uh, sort of what I what I play for yeah. right now. Um, nothing's no day is ever going to be be perfect, and I I don't think you can particularly strive towards that either. Um, but I'm very very happy with my performance and the fact that I managed to actually put up a really really good score against one of the best players in the world, and because I know I'm capable of it. And of course he didn't, he didn't play his best, but, um, but still, and I thought, what I was most happy about my performance today was that I was um, thinking a lot clearer with little time. And I feel like that's usually the clearest indication that I'm, um, that I'm having a good day. Um, I feel like on a lot of days, I'm just guessing when there's little time. And Alareza is usually a lot better than I am in those situations, but I felt like today I was um, was holding my own, and uh, be because of that, um, I I got you know a lot of uh, a lot of points that normally may have gone the other way. Yeah, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Hikaru slightly differently in terms of one of the storylines being that you and Hikaru are are older than. Ali Reza, Faruja, and Hans Neiman. Uh, I'm a few young, years younger than Hikaru. You are, you are, um, but, you're, but you're much older than these guys. You've, you've been doing this a long time and, and doing it well. At what point do you start winning events like this and reflecting on that, of reflecting on your career or considering your, your place in trying to hold them at the gate as long as you possibly can? Is it just right now not something you think about or does that ever cross your mind? Um, look, I know I'm going to be past that at some point, but I, I feel that even though my average level probably has gone down a little bit from, from my peak, I, f I feel like I can still be very, very close to it on specific days. So um, I think I'll be around for, for a while still, and they will have to, to earn it. I'm not going to necessarily give it to them. There you go. There you go. OK. I guess. I'll, I'll reflect quickly back to an interview we once did and an answer you once gave me. You said you would be honest if you ever entered an event and you thought, and you thought you were the underdog and you said today is not that day. Today was not that day. Well, uh, I thought at a certain point today uh, when I was feeling completely out of it, I was thinking that if I don't get myself together, I'm going to get obliterated today so at that point I didn't feel like much of a much of a favorite but sort of once once we got here even though I, w I lost a couple of games in a row I, w and I was down at, at that point I never felt that I was going to lose the match like it might be close I might win I might lose but it, it never felt that I, I was up against uh, a better player okay. last question I promise it's been a wild couple of years there was some closure at this event big picture in terms of not just winning, obviously, this final match versus Ali Reza Perugia, but winning the semifinal against Hans Niemann. You've defended your title,
but is there also a little bit of a sense of relief? Do you feel in some ways that this event is the closing of one chapter and, and moving forward in a different way, uh, given that whatever questions might have been answered in some way in terms of how you performed on Friday? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to no, don't know what Are to you, say. Like, I, I think, I mean, Neiman has become a good player, uh, a very good player. But, I mean, thinking that our levels were going to be close was not realistic. But I generally hope that he can that he can move forward and yep. and um, and be a very good player because I, I think he's. He's doing a lot, a lot of things right, but I mean, um, I don't think we learned anything particularly new about our respective playing strengths um, this weekend. Okay, well, we maybe didn't learn anything new about Magnus Carlsen other than he's still got it, he's still the GOAT. One more time, this guy is not even close to going anywhere.